Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Um, so today's video is going to be the last of my dose series and it's going to be about cage setup and it's going to be about diet and the kind of little tweaks and implications and kind of things to think about with those in particular. Right okay so first thing cage setup. So now we have my usual cage, it's gone autumnal <laughs> today um, but there are things that really we need to consider, particularly for does. I mean, you've obviously got the general enrichment ones and you want to satisfy the natural behaviours. So you've got kind of climbing, running, jumping, balancing, gnawing, digging, foraging, um, amongst others. And um, problem solving is always an important one. Um, with does in particular, what you need to bear in mind is they are more agile than books. Um, so they are far more capable than you think they are. And I will say this is to a point. So if you've got rats that have never had a kind of enriched, challenging cage and you throw them into something like this, they're probably going to fall a bit. Actually, that probably doesn't matter that much because my cage is set up so they haven't got far to fall and they've got something soft to land on. However, with most does, particularly if you're starting them from young, they're going to be very agile. So the things you can do with does, which is kind of on top of what you could do with books, is do things like um, thinner branches or more vertical. So if you notice here, when we looked at my book setup, I had a lot more kind of close to horizontal bars. Um, I didn't really have as many kind of nearer to vertical ones and that's because does generally are fitter, they weigh less so that means that they can get up these vertical things and quite often you'll see one of the younger ones shimmying up and down. Actually down is quite funny because they kind of wrap the tail around it and it's really um, quite skillful. Um, other things to think about with does is they can balance more easily than books so um, using thinner things, so I've got quite a thin branch along here which is for balancing also using things that are kind of more wobbly. So I've got a kind of bridge up there that they can um, move around. Um, they've got a swinging kind of house in here. They're generally just that little bit more confident. What might freak a book out is actually far less likely to freak a doe out, particularly once they're used to this kind of thing. Um, other really important thing that I tend to consider with does a lot more than books is nesting material. So does absolutely kind of generally love building nests and they like collecting things to do it. So one thing I've done with this one is partly because it's pretty and I like orange and partly because it's autumny. Um, I've got a lot of little silk leaves here and these are the type of things that they can pull off and they can use for nesting material and I'll chuck afterwards because they're dead cheap. Um, we also have um, some straw here. Um, I should say with straw and actually with hay, make sure you get really good quality stuff, stuff that's dust free. Um, but they do actually seem to really like building nests with straw and we've got some dust free hay up here as well. Um, and that's kind of like a selection there's a few other bits in there um you don't have to use kind of hay or straw if you don't want to torn up newspaper will be absolutely fine um bits of old kind of cut up fleece um if you're using material make sure it's not got lots of loose kind of strings because that can be dangerous um but do take that into account with those give them nesting material give them plenty of it i will say the bamboo and um, they love stripping the little leaves off and kind of either eating them or carrying them around so that goes down really well as well um, in terms of the rest of stuff with does, in terms of setup, um, really they're quite easy and they're a lot more straightforward. You don't have to think as hard about the setup generally for a doe because they will normally find their way around, um, even if you make it quite challenging. I will say, do take into account the fact they're more agile, so challenge them. Um, whereas with a book, it might be easy. Just just make sure you are including those things to make it a little bit more difficult um, for them, because that will help keep them fitter. And fitter is good because they build up muscle tone and they're, fit, and they're kind of healthier. Um, interestingly as well, if they are more muscular, they're gonna burn more kind of fat off. And that's really important. You don't want a doe that's overweight, probably more so than a book, um, because it impacts so many things. And that leads really nicely into my next um, section, which is on food. So, dough food. I mean, this is book and dough food. But things you need to think about with doughs. So, probably the most important thing with doughs is to think about their general kind of weight and not overfeeding them, but also trying to avoid ingredients that might increase the rate of tumour growth. Um, since does are so likely to have mammary tumours, it's the kind of most common thing you'll see in does, even from a line that's relatively well bred, though thankfully a lot less common in those. Um, so it's something you need to take into account and part of taking that into account would be to consider um, their kind of weight. So keep them slim. Um, so the amount of food really, really matters. Um, keeping them slim is really useful. 
Um, other thing is avoid things with really lo like cheap, low quality proteins in it. So anything that describes as like a generic meal, poultry meal, um, animal byproducts, um, anything that's really kind of weird and kind of random and very not specific. Um, I would generally avoid that with those because it can be linked in like increasing tumours. And that's particularly true of things like I will not touch um, burgess or pets at home, um, rat nuggets because of that. Um, I've had some bad experiences in the past with like tumours popping up like absolutely mad. Um, there's no scientific research to back this up, but it was not just me that found this. So it's just what I, I avoid like mad. Other things to think about, soya protein. Now there's quite a lot of evidence to find that that can be quite beneficial. Um, though there is mixed evidence, I will say. Um, some people point at um, GM soya and causing greater incidence of tumour and such, but I would say on the whole, most of the evidence points to a diet higher in soya protein rather than meat protein is generally being healthier um, and reducing the incidence of tumour. Um, linseed is very useful. Um, not only does the presence of linseed in a diet in theory reduce the amount of mammary tumours, um, linseed oil itself can in theory again reduce <laughs> um, the kind of growth rate of them um, which is which is very interesting and it's something that is definitely worth exploring. Um, I must say I tend to rely on linseed quite a lot anyway because it's brilliant for the kidneys so it's good for books and does. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. Does can tolerate a slightly higher protein diet generally and this is because kidney problems tend to kick in later um, if at all, you know, they, they generally do better with that than the books. Um, so you can have a diet, you don't have to think as heavily about the um, protein levels in the diet when they're getting older. I still tend to do it, particularly if I've got any that are showing the classic kidney um, symptoms of getting skinny, um, protein in the urine, um, that kind of thing. But yes, um, so that's quite important. I'm trying to think of anything else from a dietary perspective. Plenty of dark green Veg is, is very beneficial with health. I mean, it is for books and does, but it, again, it's linked with this kind of reduction in tumours and that kind of thing. And it's something that you always bear in mind with its does. But honestly, really, the single most important thing you can do for your um, does is to not overfeed. And if you don't overfeed, um, you are far less likely to get mammary tumours. So keep them slim, not skinny, but slim. Um, if you're not sure how to assess that, I've got the video a video um, quite a while back. It'd be under the condition playlist, which is all about how to tell if your rat's a healthy weight. But it's definitely one you should seriously consider if you're keeping does. So fairly simple, really, um, this video, because does are kind of my baseline, which I work off on a lot of things. Um, and you've probably seen quite a lot of the girls anyway. Um, they're not in here at the moment because they'd be escaping. But I will stop this and put a kind of bit of a film on them exploring their, their layout because it's always a bit fun isn't it. Right so over and out from me and I hope that was useful and um, I will try and do a video on Spain but basically this is the dose series over and um, other than that one so hopefully that's been useful so bye from me.